Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, joined today by Jen. Hi. We are uh, currently in Chicago, Illinois. Got in last night to my mom's house in Valparaiso, and I figured we'd drive over here about an hour away to Chicago because we didn't get enough driving yesterday. <laughs> and we're right today we're going to be going to the Field Museum, one of my favorite museums. And Jen, you've never been here, have you? No, this is one of my like top tier bucket list places. And, and why do you, why do you want to come to the Field to Museum? See Sue. Sue? A real T-Rex. Yes, Sue, Sue, the world's most complete T-Rex, resides in these walls. And they actually have a new exhibit, uh, the temporary exhibit called Bloodsuckers, a, a, a scientific study of the sucking of blood that, uh, that should, should be educational and fun. <laughs> and also some other fun stuff, some f familiar faces in there. So there's some really good taxidermy and some really, it's really famous taxidermied animals inside, in addition to Sue, the most famous T-Rex. Do you think they have a stuffed animal of Sue? Or like a little figure? So you're, you're looking, I need... Jen, Jen's already thinking she wants some Sue merch. That's true. So we'll see what <laughs> Sue merch we can find in there. I'll just rip like a leg off and take it home. That's not gonna go over well. <laughs> All right, please follow us. I don't know if I've ever been in this entrance before, actually entering here into the basement of the uh, of the museum. And as we enter through the basement, we're actually greeted by Bushman. He is the first gorilla to ever live in Chicago. He was uh, brought here to Chicago in, uh, in the 1930s and uh, passed away in 1951 and preserved here at the Field Museum so he can uh, continue Greeting guests for all eternity. <laughs> oh yeah, look how big Bushman's hands are. I, I, I'm much smaller. Would you like to shake hands with a gorilla? Yeah. Like, hello, sir. Some more uh, delightful taxidermy here. See the little baby possums there, attached to their mother. That's a lot of little babies. Now this is a dinosaur skull. This is not Sue. This is not Sue. We're not. We're not. We're not to Sue yet. I've literally walked around like, is that Sue? Is that Sue? <laughs> <laughs> and now Jen was saying when she came around the corner here that she thought this was a flying monkey. <laughs> it's actually a monkey and an owl. No, it really scared me. I was like, wait, are they real? <laughs> you thought flying monkeys were real? No, but <laughs> I was confused. For yeah, like guess if you like if you line it up. Just right. It cut, yeah, yeah, for this angle. Yeah, that's how it looks. This right angle right here. Corner. Yep, that was Looks it. like a flying monkey. <laughs> and final and complete proof the zebras do not wear saddles. So you want some pressed pennies here? I do. We haven't even hardly seen anything yet. They have Sue. And you already they have a Sue pressed penny. So I'll take all eight. You get eight for three dollars. That's a deal. Eight press pennies for three dollars? Yeah. Eight pennies for three dollars. That is a good deal. <laughs> I work in banking. You work in banking? Yeah. All right. I, um, so. I don't know how to math. Is it not taking that last dollar? There we there go. There we go. Well. You gotta fix the, you gotta fix the corners. So that they don't like it when the corners are... This is difficult. Funny. Zoltar doesn't like that either. Hooray! Are we getting all of them? Does it actually say Sue on the pennies? Yeah, one of them does. Right here, that one says Sue. Oh, okay. Oh, there they go. Dropping the pennies in there. Who oh, no! Oh, the pennies are spraying out onto the floor. Sweet. You got the Sue penny? Oh, penny. oh no! Oh, it's here. Oh no. There's Sue. There's that one says Sue all big. Just the big word, big word of Sue. Yeah, but this one's Sue too. That's actually it shows Sue. Sue. Oh, okay. And one thing the Field Museum definitely known for is their collection of man-eating lions. Here is a, a man-eater, the man-eater of Mafue. Here he's known to have eaten six people. That's a lot of people for one lion to eat. And apparently, uh, 
He greatly concerned people because actually he went into someone's house, ate them, and then carried their laundry out into the street, making the locals feel that uh, maybe the lion had some sort of dark, uh, dark energy behind it. That would be pretty, pretty scary if a lion came and ate someone and then stole their laundry. And they do have a wonderful collection of Moldoramas here. Although I do believe I do have all the Field Museum molds. There we have the white Stegosaurus. Then over here the green Ankylosaurus. I've always loved this area too. A little just dining cafeteria area with these uh, scenes of aquatic mammals. It's the otters there. The mother otter is licking the baby. Yeah, look at that elephant seal there. Look at that, look at that, look at the eyes there. It's an interesting, interesting looking creature. We have some manatees in here. See them eating the seagrass. All right, come up here to the main level of the museum. Yeah, up here we have these iconic elephants here. Some of the uh, classic taxidermy here at the Field Museum. Now, Sue used to be up here in the uh, in this atrium level, but they moved her they moved her upstairs. I know, my like, So we'll we'll, we'll see we'll see her soon enough. Okay. <laughs> I think we're gonna check out the temporary exhibit first. It's temporary, so we want to see it as fast as we can. And it is Blood Suckers Legends. Two leeches. Oh yeah, look at this terrifying, uh, terrifying mosquito here. Blood suckers. Oh, you can see it glowing red with blood in here. We start off the exhibit by seeing some blood up close and personal. See the red blood cells there. Here's the head of a black fly. It says that they uh, drink blood by using their slashing mouth parts to cut and then using the tube-like structure to suck. So they cut and suck. Cut you open, suck your blood. You ever had your blood sucked by a, by a black fly? Um, I don't think so. Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. Is there a mosquito over here? Probably. Oh, there. I think this is. Is this the mosquito? Yes, this is the mosquito. He uses his uh, long proboscis to suck blood. Oh, look at that. That, that sticks inside you. Is this it's, his face? Like his eyes and nose and little mustache? I mean, I don't know if it's. I don't know if mustache is the scientific term. Mosquito mustache. Mosquito stash. Yeah. I mean, those are his eyes and his antenna. Those are his eyes. Though? Yeah, and then his, his proboscis is like his mouth that he uses to suck blood. Here's a close-up of a leech's mouth. See how they they suck on you and leech your blood. You ever had a leech? <laughs> I've never had a leech. I was always I was, I was terrified of leeches, but I never I've never had one stuck to me. It's even more terrifying looking at that. Ah. There's the wall of blood suckers. There are over 30,000 different blood feeding species. All these different animals here eat blood. Stable flies, vampire moths. No, not chipmunks. Do chipmunks eat blood? No, okay, no, no, no. It's actually ticks. There's ticks. There's ticks on the chipmunk. I just walked over here because I was like, chipmunks drink blood, what? <laughs> Wouldn't it be terrifying if chipmunks drank blood? If they like... Yes! Uh, yeah. There's actually some really unpleasant scenes here in the wall of blood suckers. Like, look at this rabbit with a bunch of black flies sucking his blood. Now there's bird feeding black flies on this poor, uh, this poor bird here. This is terrifying. Jen, have you ever seen this before? No. It's a vampire snail. A vampire snail. And look at this. He's got like this big long tube, and then he's like in this fish, and he's a little snail like sucking blood out of a fish with a freaking curly straw. All right, here we go into the into the mosquito room. 
Can you guys hear that? This is really creepy. I want to be like, ooh. Yeah, it's like surround sound of like mosquitoes buzzing. Yeah. It's really unsettling. Oh. Like, doesn't it make you feel weird? Like, it's very, I don't, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Look at this, they even have some live blood suckers here to join us. Oh yeah, look at that leech right there, crawling along, uh, crawling the tank. He would love to be out here sucking all these people's blood. John, look at these. What are they? They're lampreys. Like, see, they use those suckers there. Oh, to suck on other fish. Are those their eyes? Their eyes on the side. Yeah. And then their big sucky mouths right they're here. They're kind of cute in a way. You think they're cute? A those are bit. like look at those are all, <laughs> you, you were like oh, those are those are so. those are all Can teeth. You match it? Yeah, that, like that, that, like no, stick you. in you. Ooh. And Jen thinks they're, they're Jen thinks they're cute. Yeah. I mean, the little mouth is there. Okay. He's like hello. See, he's like hello. <laughs> all right, here's one of the most infamous blood suckers of them all. We have the uh, vampire bats here on this cow. This cow here, he doesn't suck blood. He's just trying to sleep. But uh, you can see the little blood sucking bats there on his back. There's another one sucking on his on his hooves there. Jacob, have you ever been sucked by a vampire bat? Have you ever been sucked by a vampire bat? I was, gonna, I was gonna ask you before you asked me because yeah. I knew it was coming. <laughs> uh, no, no, I've never, no. not that I know of. I mean, they can always do it while you're sleeping. Yeah, that's true. Oh no, that's true. That's a new fear of mine. <laughs> and this is amazing. I never thought I'd see this here at the Field Museum. It is the infamous blood-sucking chupacabra here. It says, history or fiction, the chupacabra is likely a misrepresentation of some type of dog, or the chupacabra is a blood feeder found in Central America. Let me slide this up here. And it says that, uh, now they believe that the, the, the museum stance is that the chupacabra is li li likely a misrepresentation of some type of dog, and they believe that it's fiction is a blood feeder found in Central America. You know what, Mr. Chupacabra? I still believe. I do. I do believe. Now we move on to the vampire. Another legendary blood sucker. Talks about the different ways to kill a vampire. The silver dagger there. A, uh, a wooden stake with a hammer through the heart. And uh, what's this? Hawthorne sprigs? Oh, so these are Hawthorne is apparent sprigs. It says this is what they most uh, most effective vampire steaks, I believe, to be made out of this type of wood. And of course, garlic, garlic there repels vampires. And uh, the Christian cross and holy water. And uh, it says vampire killing kits usually contain pistols. I guess uh, being used to fire silver bullets at vampires. And here are two of the most famous vampires of all time, Count Orlok from Nosferatu there, the pale monstrous vampire, and then uh, and of course we evolved into the sophisticated charming vampire of Count Dracula. He's the suave vampire, tricks you, hypnotizes you, finds uh, ways to manipulate you into letting you drink his blood. Nosferatu, more of a feral monster. Which uh, which vampire do you uh, do you uh, prefer, the savage, terrifying Nosferatu, or the suave and charming Count Dracula? There we have a vampire bat there. We love bringing out our specimens. So. Here's some movie posters related to uh, blood sucking. The giant leeches here. Blood Lake. I've never heard of Blood Lake, but apparently it stars Shannon Doherty and Christopher Lloyd. It's just, maybe we have to, me and Jen may have to check out Blood Lake. We're gonna watch Blood Lake later? I do. <laughs> Shannon Doherty and Christopher Lloyd. Oh, there we go. Are those like extra teeth coming out? Like, what I, I don't know. They feed on one thing only, I guess, blood. And then Mosquito the movie? That sounds scary. And, uh,. The Tick, which I don't remember the Tick, the superhero ever like actually sucking any blood. 
there's a tick action figure there. Now again, I don't remember him actually sucking blood. Do you? Uh, I didn't really watch the tick. Didn't so. really watch the tick. No, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't think he. I feel like I'd be a bit more interested if he. If did. he sucked blood. <laughs> And then who's this for Masters of the Universe? That's Mosquito, I think. Mosquito. So he was a mosquito. I do remember this guy, Leech. I actually had him. He, uh, another Masters of the Universe figure. I had him. I, I remember my, Leech. I don't really remember Mosquito too well. Yeah, I don't remember Mosquito. My he mom. Very, like Deadpool. My mom threw away all my, uh, my, all my, all my Masters of the Universe figures. So I'm so sad that I don't have him <laughs> back at the house. Now moving into the bloodletting section you know back in the days when they thought all your problems could be solved by just taking some of your blood away main problem too much blood in your body and here's some leech bowls that would keep the leeches yeah i think i do think they occasionally do use leeches still in the medical field but back in the day if you had a cold if you had diarrhea if you had trouble sleeping the answer was covering you with leeches Look at this, look how cool this is. You like Do you the leech jar? And, like, use it as our cookie jar? That would be pretty fun. It's so cool. To just have that like sitting on the counter in, yeah. our, in our new kitchen. <laughs> yeah, there's some bloodletting tools. These are different knives here for cutting out blood. Yeah, a different, uh, yeah, all these different ways to get blood out of your body. Have you ever had too much blood in your body, Jen? Um, I don't think so. I hope not. I'd be like, I don't know what happens if you have too much blood in your body. They have to, like, oh, they they have to get a leech to suck it out or cut it out. <laughs> No, I guess not. No leeches. Yeah. You don't want any leeches on your body? The leech cookie jar. You should put it right next to the cookie jar and fill it full of leeches so people <laughs> try to get cookies like, oh, and then oh. they accidentally eat a leech. Oh no! <laughs> Here's some tips on how to keep blood suckers away from you. Of course we saw the tips on how to kill a vampire, but sometimes it's harder with these smaller blood suckers like mosquitoes where it's preferable to just wear a bag on your head. Uh, here's different bug repellents, and they're saying they're rated here repellents that work well, repellents that somewhat work, and repellents that don't work. So these like DEET and things like that, they all work. These are somewhat work. These are like more like uh, more like organic answers, like uh, candles and things like that. But apparently, in the don't work section, um, who is? A banana. At them. Oh, a banana. you eat them. I thought they were literally like, oh wait, it's a banana. I've never it. heard that bananas keep no. keep away mosquitoes. Neither by throwing or ingesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, has anyone else heard that bananas repel mosquitoes? Leave a comment in uh, in the comment section. Of all the gross of all the gross things in this blood sucking exhibit, this may be the grossest. You could feel the wounds created by blood suckers. Feel this model of a leech bite. Ugh. What are these? Oh, these are bed bug, giant bed bug bumps. Uh, let's see if we can squeeze them a little bit. These are flea bites. Flea bites look a lot like the, uh, this is seriously giving me like itches, like no, looking like at it, it thinking all. about it. Look at this one. That is a tick bite. Oh my gosh. Uh, What's, ooh. Black five. Oh, it's are they um, oozing? These black five bites are like oozing goo. This one I think is the grossest. That's a mosquito bite. Just oh, like, just like a, how just big it is. Swollen up like a big lump of cottage yeah. cheese. Ew! Now you made it grosser. The blood suckers have their own gift shop here. Oh, you found a blood sucker? I did. Oh no. You can also get a get a portrait of uh, of Bella Lugosi there. <laughs> Here's some more blood suckers, Jen. You wanna this flea home with you? Hi, little guy. He's kind of cute. Here's, some, here's a little fuzzy ticks and bed bugs. Would you like to take a bed bug home and put it in your bed? That seems like it would just be tempting fate. Yeah, no, he could stay here. <laughs> Look at the little head lice there. It says, hey there, I'm a head lice. <laughs> so this is like a big mosquito, but inside he carries all the diseases that he spreads. Oh, no. Like there's his malaria right there, and then uh, there's the uh, there's the dengue fever. <laughs> the little is dengue there fever. Else in him? Is it just the malaria and dengue fever? Yeah. All right, we're actually headed through the big taxidermy section here. Now uh, it's pretty nostalgic to me. I remember going to the museum as a kid. Uh, both this museum and the uh, Milwaukee Public Museum. I just always get nostalgic seeing these old school taxidermy tableaus. Some uh, 
rhinoceros is there. And across the way, oh, see these uh, tigers have murdered this, uh, this warthog. That one looks very sad about it. The tiger looks sad? Yeah, like, oh, oh you're, sorry, I don't know about that, Jen. I don't think tigers, I don't think tigers ever feel regret. <laughs> and look who we have here. These are possibly the most famous residents of the Field Museum behind uh, oh Sue the T-Rex. Oh, oh, here they come. Watch out, boys, they'll chew you up. Oh, oh, here they come. It's the Savo man-eaters. Yes, these two lions here. These are both male lions, even though they do not have manes. Two maneless male lions that ate, between the two of them, they ate thir at least, at least 35 people that worked on the railroad in, the, uh, in Savo, in Africa. They actually made a movie about these two lions called The Ghost and The Darkness. Eventually, they, these lions had to be hunted down by, by a famous game hunter and taken out. They originally were transformed into two lion rugs and, uh, and put on the floor, but eventually were, uh, were re-taxidermied and placed here as permanent residents of the Field Museum as the Sabo man-eaters. It's really just standing here in front of these lions. It's really, and you just think about it, these lions have killed 35 people. And here they are just staring right at me. What do you what do you think, Jen? No, it's really unsettling. Like I walk up like, Ooh. It's, <laughs> Yeah, it's kinda it's kinda creepy. Just just being here, just kinda taking in the gravity. Like people were just terrified of these uh, of these two lions. Now, uh, one reason they actually ate people, it's kind of interesting, they have their two skulls here. And if you look, you can see there's, there's significant damage to the teeth of the skulls. And the idea, I guess the, 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 the leading theory is that because of these dental problems, because these lions were in pain and had trouble hunting, they actually turned to hunting people because hunting people was, uh, was easier than hunting their normal prey, which would be like water buffalo and things like that. Kind of crazy when you think that uh, humans actually are the more easy animals to eat, but it does make sense, you know, humans don't run very fast. They're, uh, you know, they don't have any, any natural defense mechanisms. So when a lion gets super hungry, they start picking off humans. You know, that kind of just think about it. That means that the only reason a lion normally doesn't eat you is because he doesn't think you're delicious enough. These water buffalo over here are really relieved that the uh, Sabo man-eaters have teeth problems and uh, can only hunt humans. And possibly even more terrifying than the Sabo man-eaters is this uh, pile of baboons here. Oh, look at him. Yeah, all the different types of apes and monkeys here. But who is the most unusual primate that asks? Jen, why don't you go check behind the curtain and see who the most unusual primate is? Is it? It's Jen! It's Jen is the most unusual oh. primate. I'm unusual. <laughs> Jen, I have, a, I have a request. Okay. When I die, I want you to make sure that my skeleton goes into the monkey section <laughs> at, the, uh, at the museum. So you want that one removed and yours placed in its place? I mean, you don't have to remove that one, but I, I'd like to be here in the case, hanging out, just chilling in the case, my yeah, skeleton I chilling with these monkey skeletons. I mean, this, guy's all, this guy gets to live all eternity as a skeleton, hanging out with monkeys. What's, that is pretty what's cool. cooler than that? That's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> you can see the chew marks around the gateway here, because it leads us into the rodent room, and rodents love chewing on things. Oh no, you like the rodent room, Jen? I really do. What does one mean rodents? <laughs> like, they're so cute. Let's get the little wood woodchucks here. I want here. like a raccoon and a skunk and a woodchuck. You like this beaver? beaver? Yes. Look at this happy what little a beaver. Cutie is. Can we just like have a family of yeah. rodents? Sure. That's gonna be the. I have a porcupine. Oh, there's a porcupine over there. Yeah. And look and at this. Thing. Look at this big. This is, this is a porcupine too. He look. He's not. This one here. This one here is way more pokey than this one. What is this? I don't know, what it is that? It looks like a Pokemon. It looks like a Pokemon? That's a Springhass. 
Can we get one spring of those? Spring ass. Too? You want a spring ass? Yeah, I want a spring oh. ass. It's a trash can right here. Oh, it's full of, uh, full of rats eating garbage. They're cute too, though. So you think even the rats eating garbage are cute? Yeah. <laughs> oh, why don't they grow it so much? And we're walking through all the big animals and like, oh, that, and we come in here and I'm like, they're so cute. <laughs> Here we got some kangaroos. These are like Australian animals. The kangaroos, the koala bears there, a wombat, and look at that. It's Taz, it's Taz. <laughs> the Tasmanian devil there. This is the carnivore room, and this guy's name is Ancestor, and he says, would you believe every single animal in this room is descended from me? So this is the common ancestor right here. He looks kind of like, uh, it's kind of like a, a, a dog version of Garfield. <laughs> so yeah, look at all the different animals here. All uh, descending from this guy right here. You got the cats there, like the hyena. You've got, uh, now these are more cat-like animals here. Then you got the dog relatives over here. I guess these are types of, of dog, like canine. Okay, these are weasels. Sorry, I didn't know weasels were related to dogs. I didn't know weasels were related to canines. That's actually kind of interesting. And otters too, otters related to dogs. I can kind of see it in a way, the way that like they play in the water, but still not something I ever thought about. And I guess they're also uh, related to these, uh, these seals here. That weird orange guy, even related to these big old bears. That bear looks so happy. Over here are some more dog style carnivores. It's interesting, you see the dogs here and then this, uh, this is a raccoon dog. My God, it seriously looks like it's half raccoon, half dog. I mentioned uh, the Field Museum, a lot of taxidermied friends, a lot of taxidermied superstars. We had Bushman, we had the man eater downstairs, we had the man eaters, the Sable man eaters up here. We got Sue up on the top floor. And here we have Sue Lin the first panda that ever came to the United States. 1937 came to the Brookfield Zoo here in Chicago, died a year later of pneumonia. Oh, that's not good. That Chicago weather will get you. But uh, fortunately, I guess Sue Lin gets to stay in, uh, in America forever here at the, uh, at the Field Museum. What's wrong, John? I think, I've... I, I... <laughs> I think I'm afraid of birds. Well, you're in the wrong room for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of birds in here. Like a lot of birds. You're afraid of ducks? No, I like ducks. So ducks are fine? Ducks are okay. What about the swans? Oh my gosh. Swans, swans are terrifying. Swans actually are really aggressive there and scary. Was, uh, at my old job, there were swans in the parking lot. They had laid eggs and there were like babies. And there were signs up like... Oh yeah, they'll the attack you. Attacking. They'll attack you. And like you had to walk to your car like... Ooh. I remember my aunt worked at somewhere and a, a swan attacked a lady in the parking lot and broke her arm. See? <laughs> Here we have some of uh, Punxsutawney Phil's family. The uh, groundhogs here, look at this. A little groundhog wrestling match. So this big dinosaur skeleton here is Maximo, the Titanosaurus, this giant dinosaur. But Jen was just pointing this out, that you can message Maximo, you can te text Maximo at, uh, at this number here. You're gonna Send a text message to Maximo, Jen? Yeah. What'd you ask him? Hi, Maximo. Hola, I am the world's largest dinosaur. Try asking me something about myself, my life, my appearance, or my discovery. Ask him who his best friend is. You'll find my dinosaur friends, including Sue the T-Rex, in a bombing planet on the second floor. His best friend? He just told you his best friend was Sue. Yay! <laughs> What are you having for Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> what are you having for Thanksgiving dinner? <laughs> what, did, what, what did he say? My apologies. I have not yet learned everything about this monitor. Oh. He hasn't learned about Thanksgiving. Oh, that's sad. No one taught Maximo about Thanksgiving. Oh, maybe we should bring him like a drumstick or something. <laughs> or some stuffing. All right, we're gonna head up to the top floor and see if we can find Sue. Yeah, up here on the uh, top floor, we can get a peek at Maximo a little closer. 
Oh yeah, there he is. Poking his head up. He told us his best friend was Sue and that he has not yet learned what Thanksgiving is. Oh look, over there, there's a poem written about Maximo, Ode to Maximo. Earth, this is Earth, once bore upon your shoulders Maximo. Maximo, even being the solid hollow in this hall, you barely fit into my poem. And then you can pause the screen if you want to read the rest of the poem. A view of the lobby down there. And then over here, in this box, they used to have Sue's head. Sue the T-Rex's head used to be in this box. And now, they have a coelocanth. I've talked about the coelocanth before on this channel. It's a, uh, a, a fish that they thought was extinct for millions of years until they uh, caught a live one off the coast of South Africa. They're getting ready to head into the uh, evolving planet section where Sue is. But out front they have this giant pterosaur, the Quetzalcoatlus, this giant flying dinosaur here. And they do have a beautiful Moldorama version of the Quetzalcoatlus, but I do already have that one. And again, trying not to make as many uh, duplicate molds as I used to. I just start running out of room. I have nowhere to put them. I don't think, I don't think the before we get to Sue, we have to walk through the evolution of the entire planet. See this giant armored fish head here. And we can actually uh, make the giant armored fish chomp. So let's push the handle back to chomp. So, put your finger in there, Jen. Nom, 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 nom. You see this happy little fish crawling out of the ocean determined to become the first land animal. Cutting here through the uh, prehistoric forest. Here's some of the skeletons of some of the early land animals. We saw the fish crawling out of the water and slowly evolving into creatures that look more like this. This is the Demet Demetrodon over here. A lot of people think he is a dinosaur, but he's actually more like an early mammal. Different mass extinction events here. What died? Let's see how much life was lost. Oh my God. All of it. Oh my gosh. Oh, good. Whew, now they're back. Now I'm relieved. All right, now we're heading into some dinosaur territory here. So this is not Sue here. This is actually a Daskylosaurus, a, a different type, a cousin of the T-Rex. Me and Jim were just having a discussion about like what was real bones in here and what was not. And this actually shows you what is real and what is not on this dinosaur. So what is in the brown is the actual fossil. What is in the white is reconstruction. And um, then I guess they are, the skull is downstairs. They actually saw the skull when we came in. So yeah, a fair amount of that is real. I do think like a lot of times the dinosaurs, they do use casts instead of putting the real bones out just because they're fragile, expensive, and it's easier to just use the cast. But that's actually got some real, real bone on it. This is a Parasorphalus, and it actually you can, can see what noise he made. Apparently he made a noise with this giant thing in his head. And uh, Jen, do you want to make the dinosaur make noise? Very You're very excited about this? You hear him? Kind of sounds like a duck. <laughs> now, I said I was trying not to get doubles made of the Moldorama, but I think here for Vet Jen's first trip to the Field Museum, I think she needs a Moldorama Sue. All right, make us a Sue. down the chute. Do you know how to you know how to do it? You gotta be careful, it's hot. Can you combine Sue and Shoot together? Is it as a is it hot? You gotta hold it, you guys supposed to hold it upside down to let the uh, let the heat out those vents. Alright Sue gets her own little subsection here in the evolving planet section so let's go uh, let's go see Sue. 
And there she is. You excited, Jen? I'm super excited. I got teary. You're teary eyed to see yeah, Sue? That's a real dinosaur. No, that is the actual real skull of Sue there. Now, they said that the skull, if you see, if you look over here on this side, you can see the skull is kind of mushy. Like, it, it, but they said it was like, uh, I guess her head was deformed during fossilization. So on the rest of the skeleton, they put a different skull that is a little more, they fixed it a little bit. What do you mean by like, during fossilization? Like while she was like on the ground dead and like oh, becoming oh, a fossil, okay. like her head got, her head kind of got smushed. Even though she like, it's the most complete uh, T-Rex skeleton ever found. But the head's a little mushed up, so the head on her is, they, they fixed it to be a little more uh, unmushed. And they said that they need to access the skull uh, for scientific reasons. In addition, it's really heavy too. So they, they put the skull here for easy access. But yeah, that is a real, full, and complete T-Rex skull, which is pretty unbelievable. And here is the rest of her. You see that skull on the body is uh, looks a lot better than the mushed one in the uh, in the case. Yeah, look at that. Shadow on the ceiling. Oh yeah, you can see the the shadow there of Sue from up above. Super cool, super cool to see the full uh, T Rex skeleton. Look how big she is. That's what I was thinking. That like. T-Rex is even bigger than I thought. It's funny, they often make jokes about how small the T-Rex's arms are, but here's actually a close-up of Sue's arm, and it's actually probably the same length as my arm. And look at this, they do a projection show on Sue. Showing the different parts. And as we leave Sue's exhibit, they have a small box of bonus Sue chunks here. <laughs> These are all, I guess, random little pieces of Sue bone that don't fit into the uh, skeleton otherwise. From here we head into the human evolution section. Here is Lucy, one of the most famous uh, early humans. They found a partial skeleton. Of course, this model constructed from that uh, partial skeleton. And this is Salam. They call her the uh, earliest child. She's very adorable. So this is an Australopithecus found in 2000. It's a type of early human. And uh, says this is, was the, one of the most complete uh, skeletons of an early child. It says that uh, children actually, children fossils of, uh, fossils of early human children are very rare. So she was a very special find. Here's a recreation of the Lucy skeleton. I saw the, uh, the model of Lucy over there. So a skeleton of a Homo egastar, early human there. There's the uh, reconstruction of that skeleton. Here is the Neanderthals, a relative of the uh, modern human, but actually a lot of people do have Neanderthal DNA, including me. When I took my uh, 23 and Me genetics test, they actually said I had a incredibly large, <laughs> incredibly large percentage of Neanderthal DNA. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Leave a comment in the comment section. Do I resemble my my cousin here? Do I look like a Neanderthal? Now this is pretty amazing. This is a human burial dating back 15,000 years ago, known as the Magdalian woman. A woman uh, buried in, you know, so not just found randomly, but actually it was a, a human placed in the ground by other humans as part of a burial. 
and then they had actually taken the Magdalene woman's skeleton, took her skull, and made a uh, reconstruction of what she likely looked like. So that's pretty amazing, actually get a peek into the past there. One of my favorite prehistoric mammals over here, the giant land sloth, the Megatherium. Some of the Ice Age animals in here. And actually have a simulation where you can see what it's like to be stuck in the tar. So this one simulates a horse's leg. And okay, that lifts out pretty easy from the tar. The other one is like a larger animal, like a mammoth. Oh, that one's a lot harder to pull out. So it's saying the animals with larger legs are more likely to get stuck in the tar. Now one of the most depressing things in the entire field museum is this. The number of species that have gone extinct since eight o'clock this morning. So it is about, uh, right now, it's about four o'clock in the afternoon. So since eight this morning, there's been 31 different animals that have gone extinct today. Wow, that's a real bummer. We exit here into the Sioux store where you can buy some Sioux related merchandise. What are you getting there, Jen? Sticker. Getting a souvenir. Yes, I'm sad I didn't think. Of that. <laughs> oh, you can get Sue a sticker of Sue's mushy skull. Oh, that's fun too. Oh, Sue on Earth Day. Oh, this is the day that Sue was on Earth, so essentially Sue's birthday, Valley oh. Face, South Dakota, August 12th, 1990. Okay, this is actually pretty clever. Remember the uh, the three three wolf howl shirt? Here they have the. Uh, the three Tyrannosaurus howl at the moon. I know the, the three wolves howling at the moon, kind of a shirt that went viral back in the day. And here is a recreation with, uh, with dinosaurs. I'd say <laughs> I do like this. Some Sioux clothing, the Sioux shirt. This is Sioux, apex predator. And apparently uh, they call her a rage, Sioux the rage pigeon? I guess because she's kind of like a bird. That's interesting. What's that, like a bumper sticker? Yeah, it says, I saw Sue at the Field Museum. And I did. That is true, I you did. I finally saw her. <gasps> Here's some shot glasses with Sue on it in case you want to get super drunk. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> like it's a rage pigeon keychain. Rage I pigeon. I don't get it. Rage, I think just because she's like a bird. Yeah. Yeah, some dinosaur books here. Here's a book about Sue. And here's <laughs> the world's most depressing <laughs> children's book. <laughs> Mopey. Mammoth, why's the mammoth mopey? Because all, cause all those... his friends are dead. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we both have things to show each other. <laughs> Come down here to the, back to the ground floor. This is the underground adventure. Is this way. So I guess we gotta head into the shrinking chamber here to be shrunken. Oh, okay. Okay, I guess continue through the shrinking chamber here. Oh, and look at this. We've been successfully shrunken. We are now under the soil. And look at that. There is a there is a penny that is actually larger than I am because I've been shrunken. See all the different creatures here living in the soil, including this giant grub here. Massive earthworm, a snail shell there. Here's the earwig nest. You can see the mother earwig there. Oh no! Oh my gosh! He's trying to pinch me. Oh, don't, don't, don't pinch me, giant earwig. Oh, watch out! Watch out! It's a giant crayfish. I guess it's not a giant crayfish. Yes, we've been shrunken to the point where crayfish are now terrifyingly huge. Oh yeah, you can see it move there. Oh my gosh. You hear the creaking noise of the crayfish. Oh, 
God, this is somewhat horrifying. You see the giant spider there? Oh, see moving its legs, munching on a, a little worm there. So thank you for joining us today here at the Field Museum in Chicago, Illinois. I love coming out here. I came out here as a kid, did field trips here as a kid, and I love checking back in and seeing the new exhibits, and I definitely love the Bloodsuckers exhibit they had today. I love the, you know, kind of incorporating, you know, legend, mythology along with science, so I think it's a lot of fun. I did not, not expecting to go into the Field Museum today and see the Chupacabra. Love cryptids, love love that cryptids getting more mainstream exposure. And of course, I always just love the exhibits here. Love Sue, love the Savo Man Eaters, love Bushman, love the all the all the great uh, creatures here that live within the walls of the Field Museum. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country filming roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun random stuff. If you'd like to help uh, support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and doing personalized messages on Cameo. All that information is in the description of this video and all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this T-Rex towering above all of us. Until next time, my friends. This one's in the bag.